Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone, and today is the continuation of the spooky gothic horror bands for the month of October, Halloween, my favourite time of year, and uh, what better way to get into this than with Danzig, so the mighty John Christ. It would really help me out if you subscribe. The reason like Jake Paul, Rice Gum and makeup tutorials are so popular is because kids they share and they like and they, they're early adopters to this type of thing, social media. Old, older people don't tend to share and the rest of it, so then that's why channels like mine stagnate. So give me a thumbs up, spread the words, really help me out. Let's get straight to it. This one was crazy. I went, I went insane on this one. Even by my standards, this one is nuts. The lengths that I went through to find out what was used on this. Danzig, John Christ. Circle of Town. <laughs> And we're back. So, uh, a few of you might know that I'm sick. I was going to try and sing on this, but then the coughs and the splutters, no, it was not happening. So that's it. I was really happy with how this came out, considering how little information I had to go on. How do I find out what gear they used if there is no information on it? I hassled, spammed, John Christ himself on his Facebook, sorry about that, pleading for any information, So, but I didn't get any response. There's nothing online, there's nobody talks about it, and I was really getting frustrated. So how did I end up with what I ended up with? I think to tell that story, we have to look at Def Jam Records. Def Jam Records was started by my favorite producer, Rick Rubin. I was thinking earlier, he's my favorite modern producer, and do you know what? He's my favorite all-time producer. Calling him a producer is a bit of a stretch. He's like an organizer. You know, it's not like he's in there moving microphones and the rest of it. But he has a vision which he sees through. Uh, Glenn Danzig, for instance, said that he didn't even know a, a Hammond organ was. 
you know, and if you're a producer, <laughs> what is so brilliant about this man? Because he is brilliant. Delegating and his ear. He just has it. So when I was researching this, uh, I've, an interview with John Christ and an interview, I was reading interviews with Eri Vaughn and Glenn himself, obviously, and uh, some, some of the suggestions from the Facebook uh, group for Circle of Tone. Go join. So we're a thousand strong. Share your music. Just search Circle of Tone in Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. And what has Def Jam Records done since? So much. Like, insane. Slayer. Beastie Boys, the, the list is actually insane. Rick Rubin was part of uh, Toxicity. He did the System of a Down, the best System of a Down album. Oh, he's fucking brilliant. So how did I end up using a Plexi? Because that's what I ended up using. When all the information tells me that it was a bedrock amp and John Christ, his number one guitar, his uh, BC Rich, they played a gig which resulted in a riot. And in that riot... Basically, all of the security and the rest and the, the roadies, they were throwing their equipment off the stage because they just had to get out. Otherwise, they were going to get killed. So they threw his guitar downstairs with no case, just threw the guitar down and the, the, the uh, neck snapped off it. So this was the day before they were going to go into good recording. So he had to actually rent a guitar for the session he went to the local guitar store and he lined up all the guitars similar thing that happened with Hetfields. it happens when he uh, got his explorer and he tried out all these guitars and the one he picked was a prs my favorite album was recorded with my least favorite guitar but I, now i kind of get it so I, what i did i researched the pickups that were in all these old prs's and they have a ceramic magnet, you know, about 15K output and that type of thing. So I say, hey, I got a Dirty Fingers ceramic magnet. It's like 14K output, practically the same. It's going to be the same feel, you know what I mean? So I try it out, mic it up, doesn't sound anything like it. I'm like, what the? So I play back the original and I'm hearing almost like a single coil thing in there. Like a, a rattly, it's thick. It's a dark guitar sound, right? But there is a single call type of sound on top of it. I'm like, what the, f what is that? So I researched the PRS. I don't know nothing about PRS guitars. All I know is that I had a PRS McCarthy and it was too good for me because I'm a scumbag. This thing, it reminds me of uh, Ferris Bueller's Big Day Out where he doesn't drive the car. His dad just rubs it with a diaper every weekend. I was doing the same thing. I couldn't put, I couldn't bring this thing on a thrash metal stage. It was like a piece of art. I didn't actually like the sound of it. It played like a beautiful beautiful fit finish and the rest of it but the tone was too thick and muddy and wasn't responsive so what was it so i researched it and apparently these old bc these these old prs's they had something called a sweet switch and what it does it does something to do with the capacitance of the signal so you know it's kind of simulates not a buffer but it's like a a delay which changes the signal a little bit i'm not sure it phases it or whatever but it does something and some people have described it as a cocked wah single call strati cocked wire -y type of thing i'm like that's it so i couldn't get that out of my dirty fingers because i didn't have the sweet switch that would mess up the signal apparently something to do with like, almost like a buffer uh i've i've, I've read it i've read the explanation of it, like, i still don't know what the fuck they're talking about <laughs> Someone can explain to me what a bloody sweet switch, sweet switch does, please? <laughs> so, that is out the window. So I couldn't use my dirty fingers, because I don't have a sweet switch. That is going to get me that weird coctoir type of effect with, to it. And so, I ended up using my own guitar, which has much lower output pickups, but it has that little snarky thing to it that a PRS or a dirty fingers doesn't. So that's how I got it. So I got a little bit of the excitement from that. So that was the guitar, okay? So that's how I got to get the guitar sounding a little bit similar, even though I didn't have a PRS with a sweet switch and different pickups. So that's how I got around that. So they had one amp, which is this, and it broke after two songs, which is pretty funny because that's what it was notorious for. They were notorious for, for breaking down, apparently. So there's not a lot of information on these amps. So it's like, I, it's not as if I could say, oh yeah, this is based on a Plexi or this is based on something. And apparently they were original designs, but they, <laughs> the geniuses that they are, 
they copied Vox's cabinets and things like that. And so they got dinged for that. And then they ended up going out of business. They, they go out of business, I think, because of guitar rev magazine reviews, you know, because they were turning up broken, things like that. But when they worked, they were gold, apparently. So I'll be interested to pick one of those up. So the, so what am I left with? The, the other information from John Christ that I could gather was they used a couple of rented Marshalls. Now, there's hundreds of different Marshall models. So I, how am I going to figure out what the hell they used? <clears throat> I started off because, you know, it was in the 80s. And I, if they were going to rent something in America from the UK, you know, because Marshall was all built in the UK then, it was going to be a JCM 800, right? Because that was the latest and greatest. So I try, I put up the, the JCM 800 and I, I put it in the sound booth and I mic'd up the micro, the, the speakers uh, and it sounded it sounded good, but it sounded nothing like Danzig. So I did more research. I'm pulling my hair. I can't find out why, why I can't figure this out. You know, I can't find inf any information on it. So then I read that Rick Rubin's vision for, for this Danzig album was to recreate the essence of Highway to Hell by ACDC. The light went off in my head. So I was like, I bet we rented whatever the ACDC used to use back then. And I was like, they used to the fuck, they rented a goddamn plexi. So, and so that's the conclusion. I might be wrong, but when I set up plexi with, uh, you know, vintage voiced speakers, uh, cream backs in my case, I think it sounds like it, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, finally. This was days, by the way, of just, you know, this was carcass levels of insanity. And I went a step further. We be talking craziness because something else was driving me insane. The reverb, plate reverb, spring reverb, could not figure it out. There's reverb on these guitars, and I have, I cannot figure it out. I've got all sorts of reverbs, got plugins, I got this and that. I couldn't figure it out. And I, I realized that, and Slayer and the rest of it, they actually got rid of the reverb, and you know the the, the Slayer stuff was famous for being drier sounding i was like it's not reverb it's actually the room i figured out it's the fucking it's the guitars bouncing off the room it's the drums bouncing off the room it's not plate reverb at all and i was like god damn so what i did you know you can go on and, and call this the uh, circular tone technique because I'm, I'm the first person to do this I'm saying i don't know what the fuck what the hell what i did i recorded the bass and drums Okay, so the drums are fake drums, and the bass it was I recorded it with a tube amp, okay, and a twelve-inch speaker. So it's actually my circular tone amp and a, a vintage thirty speaker with one microphone, which will be featured on the twenty-dollar microphone video coming up. Um, so that's how I, that's what I did. So basically, I have drums and bass. Okay, I piped when I was when I hit record. I piped the drums and bass into a huge speaker that's right behind my microphone to my cabinet. Twist the cable, hey, drop my brain, oh, make me. So what's going on is <clears throat> the bass and the drums are going to be playing through this huge uh, V8 monitor, KRK, the old school one, the good one that you see in all studios. So it's going to be blasting drums and bass as if we were in the same room as these microphones. So basically, I'm re. I think this is a first. I don't think anyone's ever done this because I'm so sick of processed drums, you know, basic drums with crappy rooms. What I want is drums as if it's live, where there's three people in a room, drums, bass, and guitar, because there's bleed. You get bleed from the drum, bass drum, you get bleed from the bass guitar into these microphones. So I got these four microphones set up, all recording the guitar. And behind it, it's going to be some bleed as if there's a band playing in the same room. So these are the little things that Kempers don't do. These are the little, little things that <clears throat> is missing in modern recordings. Nobody likes modern rock recordings because of the lack of the bones being captured. The three musicians in a room, the room farting out, chaos theory. You cannot predict what those are going to be doing with cabinet modeling, with reverb modeling. You cannot predict it. So what does that do? It's as if Chuck Biscuits and Eri Vaughn is playing next to John Christ. So the blasting drums, the blasting bass is hitting the backs of my microphones. You're getting bleed. I'm getting reverb off the walls, you know, the, the, the drums slapping off the walls and everything. 
So I'm recreating as if it was a three piece playing live in a room with a loud ass, big ass speaker, you know, opposite like a PA type speaker. It's actually a big KRK eight inch uh, studio monitor with the big ones, the big beefy one. The first generation, the good ones that it's little inside the secret there for you, get an old KRK, good stuff. So that's what I did. And then, then when I did it and I played it back and I heard the uh, reverb and the, the, the fullness and that dark, evil foreboding, that's what it was. So even if I got the amp wrong, I don't care because the I got there in the end. And so that's it. The circle tone technique, I'm calling it. It's going to be the new Fredman. For all of you guys that are sick of the digital drums, you can get some chaos. You can't predict what the, you know, it's like, it's like convolution reverb. It's actual chaos. It's actually slapping off your walls. You know, it's 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 yours. Then it's not the it's not in the uh, easy drummer universe that anybody can have. You know, so that's it. Circular tone technique. You heard it here first. <laughs> so yeah, I went pretty far down the rabbit hole on this one. You know, just to because it's almost comical. Maybe I'll upload it to the Facebook group of what just easy drummer and an an ISO cab guitar sounded like. Talk about completely different. Just putting it in a big room with high ceilings and uh, a, a mic to capture the room as well and close mic speakers with the, the band, the band blasting behind it, behind my, my, my guitar mics. It made the world a difference. I'm so proud of this one. You know, for um, it's just like, I'm just showing you the process of elimination that I do when I try and figure out gear that I don't know if they used or not. And I think, you know, I think it was a Plexi. Maybe... It was a an amp that was based modded or based on one or whatever, but I, I think I'm I'm not convinced. But you know, proof is in the pudding. I think I got the vibe, and uh, that's the end of that. So there's lots of interesting uh, tidbits about this one because John Christ he saw a BCH advert with scantily clad chicks all over it. She, she had a little BCH guitar uh, like trinket between her uh, pecs. If you know what I mean, and he was like, as a you know teenager, he looked at this poster. He was like, it was so cool, the BC Rich poster, you know, metal chicks and all the rest of it. You can't do that anymore, can you? He got a job at a steakhouse for a year to buy that guitar. So before you tell me you can't afford a real amp, you can't do this. Kirk Hammett flipped burgers for two years to get his Gibson. You know, same same deal with John Christ. Do you want it or not? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't afford a practice space. Okay, uh, I guess that's why your fucking music sucks then. So, oh, okay, that's, that's pretty harsh. John Christ, what can I say? It's such a shame that he got, that it didn't work out with him. Uh, apparently, there was a lack of communication, and they fell out, and he had an accident with his hand, and he's working back. And I'd love to see him back in the fold with Danzig, you know, and failing that. Hey, Danzig, call me. You know what I'm saying? I can I can shave this off. Can I have some uh, mutton chops? <laughs> Blatant. <laughs> God, that'd be awesome. But I've loved, to say that I've loved this band is such an understatement. They were, were massive for me. And funnily enough, Danzig, the first album, was the first CD I ever bought. You know, when CDs started coming out, I was like, and to hear that on my system at the time, I, could, I couldn't listen to it enough. And Chuck Biscuits as well. It's so sad that he got into a car accident and he messed himself up. And the drumming, the drumming is amazing. It's so rock and roll. And in fact, the last time I worked with my brothers, that that was my reference, was Danzig 1. I want that type of drum sound, which ironically, John Christ hates and uh, Glenn Danzig doesn't like the guitars on it. It's like sometimes you need to save musicians from themselves you know, <laughs> and that's where the producers come in. So the Highway to Hell uh, blueprint was perfect for Danzig, for the evil Elvis. Perfect for John Christ. Perfect for Eerie Vaughn. Eerie Vaughn was pretty low in the mix, but when it did come out, it was so perfect. Like the bum 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 ba do 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 It's just so sleazy and fucking oily and dark and perfect. I love it. Starting to fucking fanboy. Great, great times. I actually saw Danzig tour with Metallica, you know, touring that album. 
and I was fucking wasting. I can't remember a single second of dancing on that. It's a, it's a Metallica's fault for uh, glorifying alcohol. I wanted to skate like anthrax and drink at the same time, and that's what I did. I can only skate downhill very fast, and uh, I got good at falling. So yeah, apparently there was so there was something like forty tapes used on that first album because it was you know the first one on Def Jam. They really wanted to get it right, and there's like you could apparently you can make eight different albums of that first album. There were so many t you know takes, so you have. I bet you if they if they still have those old tapes, I bet you they could put t together remixes of different uh, the same songs but played slightly different. I bet you they'd be fucking amazing. Get on that if you're watching <laughs> Def Jam. Come on now, throw us a bone. It's a shame that the Def Jam thing because on the second Danzig album, he start apparently according to Glenn, you know the interest waned when it came to uh, overseeing from Rick Rubin. And he's kind of, a lot of people say that, you know, he'll just lay on the couch and he won't do anything, but he delegates. He gets people to do, you know, to keep, you know, people that he trusts in these positions. But he has slipped from time to time in that respect. So, you know, Chuck Biscuits, Eri Vaughn, John Christ, Glenn Danzig, that goddamn album, man. Uh, work of genius. And the, also some of the later stuff as well, uh, I think Can't Speak is up there with them that song is beautiful i'd love to know how they got that backwards guitar uh i'd love to know the distortion on the voice how he got that it's so many questions if you know let me know in the comments so that's it that was exhausting because i've been sick through the whole time but i you know i got it's when you love something as much as this and it's i felt compelled you know coffee got me through it let's put it that way it's another annoying aspect now because not only are my neighbors going to hear my guitar they're also going to hear the fucking whole band playing when i record uh the drums through <laughs> through my monitor oh my god okay so like i say if you like this type of information uh also the microphones that i used on danzig most of them are 20 dollar mics and they're going to be they're not cheap they're not chinese they're not the rest of it it's made in america made in the uk um made in japan these are bloody good microphones that go under the radar because they're old and nobody knows really knows about them. These are good alternatives or additions to an SM57 because in my opinion, the SM57 is overused in guitar. When it comes to the SM57, what we need to start thinking that yeah, the old albums, a lot of them were recorded with an SM57 to tape. You know, we got the scritchy scritch chicken scratch mids of a SM57 on digital. Is that part of the reason why people aren't listening to, uh, you know, engrossing themselves in new modern metal like they used to with things like the Danzig album? You know, is that a part of it? Should we be looking for slightly uh, darker microphones for guitars just for that earworm? Yeah, tight, 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 big, huge, huge. Who gives a fuck? It's got to sound good. It's got to make you want to hear it constantly, you know? So that's what my $20 microphone video is going to be all about. But... I have to get these horror bands out the way, uh, culminating in typo negative on Halloween. So that's going to be a tough one. Talk about not knowing what they used. They used everything and nothing. Who knows? They used green strings. <laughs> All right. And also uh, coming up is My Dying Bride. And if I can squeeze them in before Halloween, I'll, I'll definitely do them. There's also going to be um, King Diamond and... Paradise Lost, and maybe one other bonus one. Ghost! Subscribe. Ghost! Now you've got to subscribe. Ghost.